Hey, Floodgate family. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Thursday. I am excited as heck to have Brian Sullivan back by popular request. I've had a lot of people ask about him. And this time, he's going to be touching on a topic that's near and dear to my heart, sales leadership. And he knows a little bit what he's talking about here because he wrote the book literally on precise leadership. And he did it with an expert. He did it with Colonel Benson, who actually was one of the guys that put together and operated our operation Iraqi Freedom. So, you know, talk about leadership. That's that's a lot of people putting together. That's a little more than the, you know, a team of sales reps. So he knows a little bit of insight there. So we're glad to have him back to talk to us, share a little bit of his insights, his intelligence. I don't know. Is that does that maybe yes, no, wrong word? C student. C student. OK, but hey, whatever, you know, uh, he does it well. Hey, and, you know, I, and guys, so a couple things. If you have questions, put them in the chat. We're going to be able to see it at the end of this. We're going to be able to ask, uh, Brian's going to answer some of those questions. Secondly, make sure if you like this or you just like to make fun of us, follow us on LinkedIn and uh, both Brian Sullivan and the Floodgate page and Precise Selling page. You'll get all this cool content. All right. So, Brian, we are so excited to have you here. Because I know we have a lot of questions. And one of the key one is, you know, setting up that leader for success. I mean, I know I was that classic rep of the year, rookie of the year. And then they said, well, hey, you did that well. Mm -hmm. Why don't you take one of the teams? And yep. they just said, here's your team. That was the extent of the training. So how would you say to really set up a good leader for success? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So obviously the topic's huge, right? Uh, are yeah. you born a leader? Can you make leaders? It's it's a huge deal. And and you know you'd mentioned my buddy Colonel Kevin Benson, mm -hmm. and um, I met Colonel Kevin Benson. I was playing in a Veterans Day golf tournament, and you know they pair you up with a veteran. And so of course I get in the I get in the cart with this guy. He's got the mustache like he's right out of the seventies. He's a stud, and and we start chatting about this exact topic because I love this topic of leadership, right? And what I was trying to learn, I mean, I'm with a guy who planned the second Iraq invasion. When I say literally planned, I mean literally planned. He's the guy who was the chess match guy. He's the guy, all right, we're going to come up. Here's how we get to Baghdad. We're going to come in through Kuwait this way. Unbelievable. So who cared about golf, right? I've got this right. guy, this amazing leader. And and so a lot of what we're going to talk about in the next 25, 30 minutes, um, I was a sponge, right? I was just learning from this guy because what I wanted to learn is, What's the difference in military leadership versus corporate leadership? Now, here's a guy who's only been in the military his whole life, and he really didn't know anything about corporate leadership. I've never been in the military. And what was amazing is we started talking about the similarities and what it takes to be a great leader. Now, hmm. he's been around really bad leaders, right? Hmm. It, it, he, he worked at the Army Staff and Command College, and his job was to teach leadership at the school. So we, we got together and we said, let's write a freaking book, mostly – for young guys like you and I, Joe, and you nailed it, right? It's okay, Joe, you're an awesome sales guy. We're going to turn you into a sales leader. Good luck on that. Yeah. And, you know, he, he so we talked about this topic and, I, and, and the military does a great job of not doing that, right? That there's sort of a very specific thing. And when you get to become a leader, they teach you how to be a leadership leader. college. They, yes, that's the whole point. Now, isn't this amazing? Thank God right. they do it because these are the people protecting our lives, right? But in the corporate world, we, we don't do a great job of teaching leadership. Now, back to your question of how do you set up a leader for success? You do what the military does. You teach them. It's teachable, right? And again, that big question, are you born a leader? Well, I think some people are. I think it's easier for them to become leader leaders. But it, it, there are very teachable skills. And to me, if the, the, the number one thing, you have to be a great communicator. Right? And I, I know that seems, wow, that's a, that's a softball, right? Great communicator. But I want you to think what makes a top salesperson, right? Because great salespeople are great communicators. Now, let's peel that back. What's it mean? Great salespeople would never walk into a sales call yeah. unless they were prepared. They thought about their objective. Now, they know when they walk in that door, the first thing I have to do is bring the walls down. I have to build respect and trust. Walls come down. I then ask great questions. And I don't just listen to the words they're using. I listen to the meaning behind the words, right? Yeah. And once I really learn what they're thinking and a feeling, then I convey my solution. 
I know there's going to be some concerns, some objections. I know how I've got to close them. And then I know how other products I can sell them. Here's the thing about lame managers or, or leaders. They don't treat coaching their people hmm. like they would a enormous sales call on a prospect. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what is it? great leaders? They, they might, they might've been great salespeople, but then all of a sudden, if they were like me here, you're, you're going to be the manager now. And we become crappy communicators. We break every rule that made us great salespeople because mm -hmm. we think our job is to turn my team into little mini me's and it just doesn't work. And it was a hard lesson I had to learn. Right. And right. so it's teachable. If you have a company right now, and I don't care if it's precise leadership, I, I don't, I, there's a, you know, heck, there's hundreds of great leadership uh, companies. Right now, more than ever, if you're a lame leader and your team is on the end of, the end of Zoom and you're a horrible communicator, it ain't working. You got to be good at it, right? So yeah. that's my take. You have to teach or you have to be willing to learn how to do it. I didn't know how to do it. You didn't know how to do it, but we learned how to do it. Yeah, no, it's absolutely that. And so what are some of those key actions that people need to learn? You know, what if you have, what are, what are a few of them? I know there's a bunch, right? This is, we only sure. got 30 minutes here today, right? Yeah, we yeah. don't have a full day seminar. So what are some of the key ones that like, man, you have to nail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let me start with just the quick story, right? Because it, again, you brought it up. So I'm at Welch Allen and I'm their top equipment salesperson. And they said, okay, what are you doing? I said, I have no idea. We went out and we started teaching. We created a sales training program, me and a guy named John Cady and Jack DeSaro at Welch Allen. Great. We taught all our team how to sell. And then what we realized is our managers were not great, including me, at selling things to our own salespeople. Mm -hmm. Meaning, Joe, if you're a guy, you work for me and you're not getting your expense report in. Well, you know what we would do? Hey, Joe, buddy, you better get your expense report in. Well, you know what Joe McClung would be? He'd be like, okay, boss. Right. It's and, and you, you think you I was a, a for a couple weeks, but that's it, right? <laughs> right? Right. So it's amazing. Right. So this was so funny. Right. So here I was, we had this great sales training program and I was out traveling with my salespeople and I'm like, hey, you need to be more prepared. You need to ask better questions. Hey, why aren't you using this brochure marketing department? And here I was, I was making a bunch of statements to my salespeople. And what I didn't realize, which I was teaching in the sales program, we are all contrarians. Every one of us is a contrarian. What a contrarian is, it's somebody who's opposed to um, what is told to them. So a yeah. statement is made to, and by the way, Joe, this will happen to you. If I tell you, Joe, the weather's going to be great this weekend, you know what you're going to say to me, Joe? Yeah, but it's supposed to cloud up next week. People yeah. react oppositely to what we are teaching. So what's one big lesson? One big lesson is when you are communicating, rather than tell your people what to do, become really good at asking the right questions that can lead them to your conclusion. It is the number one thing uh, um, reason managers and leaders fail is they tell, they tell, they make statements. And what they don't realize is every statement creates an equal and opposite reaction. If you instead um, allow your people to open up, talk, just like you would a customer, yeah, you can lead them to come to the right conclusion. Let me give you one example. You know, a lot of us over the past many years have invested in CRM programs. Well, yeah. what salesperson do you know says, oh my God, I can't wait to get to on document every single call. That sounds super fun. I want to I do that. I can't wait yes. to log my calls. You know what they say? It's big brother. Big brother's going to watch you know everything I'm doing. Well, and you know what the managers do? Hey guys, I, we invest a lot of money. We're going to use CRM. This is what we're doing. And I said, what are you doing? How about instead you say this? Hey Joe, you're one of my sales guys. Hey Joe. All right. So where are you logging your calls now? Well, I do it this way. All right. So when you do it this way, how's it help you? Well, it does this. Okay. So if we implemented this, would you use it? Yeah, I probably would. So you see what I'm doing? Yeah. I can get you to where I need you to go if I ask you great questions, right? right? But they can't right. sound, they can't sound uh, a leading, right? They can't be patronizing, right? And and so that art of being a great questioner, um, it's everything. I, I don't it's sales, it's leadership, it's parenting, it's it's friendship, right? Yeah. And um, final thought on this. Um, I had to learn the hard way. There was a great guy named Dave Reddick. He was an old wise man in, in the company because I was breaking every rule I just told you. I'll never forget this day. And he sat me down and I, well, I, I sat him down. I said, hey, Dave, why is no one using the selling skills that we, we talked about the program? He said, 
you know, so like, so you tell me, why do you think? And this guy asked me every question and it hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, look what he's doing to me. He's leading me to come to his conclusion. You know what that conclusion was? I was pushing it down people's throat. You can't push people to do anything. Give them a chance through leading them, right? So, so that it's a crucial skill, get, meaning get out of the way. You're, you're not, there's not about you, Mr. Manager, right? You, you have one job. Your most important job isn't the expense report. It's not the P&L. It's to make your greatest asset, which is that your people, make them better and happier at their job. If their job is selling, help them become better at selling. If you're in operations, help them become better. Get, get over yourself. Humility makes the best leaders, in my opinion. Yeah, that's good. That's a great, that's a great point. I mean, I had one, a, a great leader that I remember when I got the new role, it was a big role and I was reporting to, you know, right. The CEO and I was expected to jump in and go, Hey, do this. You need to do that. It was no direction. It was, <laughs> what do you think you should do? Why do you think you should do that? What do you think would happen? To you do that. You know, yeah. like yeah. teaching that critical thinking, because if you don't, you become the self-limiting factor of the organization. If they always get used to, because they, you've seen it, they get they'll get trained to be the easy button, right? Yeah. And being the easy button, then is, the organization can only move as fast as you are at answering questions. And yeah. then you're the guy late night pounding out emails. Your you know family's mad at you, but if you teach people how to think and get motivated, you know, and do it themselves and get motivated, why? It's not, it's not managing, it's leading. That's truly yeah, leading, right. right? Listen, we're, all, we're, we're all adults, right? And it's, it's, it's so funny to me because it, we've, we've seen bad leaders, right? I mean, you and I came up in the medical industry. We, we know the good ones who were in our companies. We know the bad ones. They're, these are very identifiable skills, right? And so, mm -hmm. um, again, this is, this is why uh, investing or reading book, right? It, for it, it, anyone who's listening to this today, do yourself a huge favor and dedicate one hour a week. If, if you're in a leadership role and you're saying, where do I find an hour? Get up an hour earlier on Tuesday. Find a leadership book. I don't care what it is and just learn, right? Because all it's going to do is when you're being bad at it, when you're telling your team, hey, guys, this is what we got to do. This is it. Something's going to hit you. You're going to say, this is all about me right now. Yeah. And it's probably not working, right? Learn leadership and, and – um, You'll be happy you did because they're going to be happier and you're going to be a lot less stressed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I have a question for you. The Right now, I used to have that time you jump in the car, right? You spend that that one-on-one yeah. -on -one time or you, you go to a meeting and you, you sit and you maybe have lunch. You get those real conversations. Now, that's not happening as much, if at all, in some places, right? Yeah. So they're doing yeah. this. How did... How do you have to lead differently? What are the different things you might need to do in this environment now to make that impact and become a true leader of the team? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the good news. Good example. This morning, Joe, I take my daughter to school. The roads are getting a little busier. So, yeah, my so it, it, it's going the right way, right? It's not only yeah, starting, it's starting, like, it's starting, to get, starting to feel a little normal, right? Now, um, I, I will answer this question a lot like I answer the um, remote selling, virtual selling, right? Because it's been a huge topic. It's, you know, I've been doing tons of Zoom meetings myself. Um, it, you know, it's it, what's different? And here's my take. If you're a really good coach, meaning you regularly reach out to your people, you're prepared. You you know the questions you're going to ask. You have an objective of your coaching sessions. If you did that pre-COVID, you can do it just as easy virtually. Yeah. So it's not an excuse to be bad. Nothing. It, I, I've been amazed at this, Joe. At that you know how Zoom and GoToMeeting and MS Teams, um, how we've all adapted. At, 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 at trying to make this as as real as you know as pre COVID, um, it, it 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 shouldn't it shouldn't matter to me. If you're a good coach pre COVID, you should be a good coach now. Now, here's what I, number one. Um, uh, we're doing things remotely. Here's a good example. If you expect your people to be amazing at let's say virtual presenting. All right, guys, we're going to start doing two meetings with our C-suite professionals. We got to be good at it. Now, you're the manager. Now, if you're also the, the guy who's going, hey, I can't find my 
mute, audio button, um, hi, which, oh, I hate these Zoom meetings. So, so a right. huge. I've You're leading by example right there, right? Oh, my yeah. God. Right. You better model great behavior. If you expect your people to look good, hey, hey I want you to be prepared. You got to be good. And you don't do it. You're in trouble. Now, a great example. We talk about this in the book, Precise Leadership, right? Colonel Kevin Benson, because we talked about this a lot. I said, well, Colonel, right? He, 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 he marched right into Baghdad with his team. And I said, well, how much of what they know do you need to know? He said, Sully, I'm, I'm doing a, um, I, I've got 300 tanks behind me. If those people don't think I can fire the weapon and hit the target, I'll get no respect. Mm -hmm. And right, and I've got another buddy, Frank Cavoti, flies uh, 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 stealth bombers, says the same thing, right? Yeah. You now, now I, I'm not saying you know as managers we have to get into the you know all the minutia maybe of, of all, our, but if you, quickest way to lose respect from your team is is tell them to do something and then you don't and try to be the. Best. Here's the point: I'll follow somebody who has knowledge and skill that I don't have. I want to know everything from you. If you're just the boss, the manager, and you didn't study, but you're telling me to study, you got nothing for me, right? So here's the point, all you managers. I want you to pick three skills, three skills that you think your team have to be better at. And then I want you to get better than them at it. You said, well, it's not my job. Yeah, it is your job because they're looking at you. So things like sales, Joe, you and I are sales. Question is, when was the last time you guys maybe did a role play? Said, okay, I'm going to create a case study for all of you. My team is seven people. Give you seven case studies. We're going to get out on Friday, 10 o'clock, and we're going to go through a great sales presentation. And I won't, at the end, I'm not going to say, well, you should do this. You should do this. I'm going to say, what'd you think? How'd you do? Hey, team, how do you think she should have done? What, like, where could she approve? Hey, what did you really love? Practice. Yeah. This is not hard. Practice, right? Yeah. And then... Um, one final thing, Joe, on the in this remote world, spruce up your LinkedIn profile. You and I are on LinkedIn right now. It's the greatest tool on the planet. I think it, um, we're going to be living remotely maybe for a little longer. I'm still getting Social out. Social selling works, right? It's proven. It works. Joe, what you're doing right now, it works. Are you kidding yeah. me? Holy works. So, yeah. They, I, I was thinking of a couple things as you were talking. One, I recently – um, read the book, No Rules, Rules, the Netflix model, right? I don't know if you've looked into that. Yeah, but yeah. the key of what makes it work when you dig into it is the fact that it's not no rules, rules. It's that leadership sets the standard, right? When they, we, we, we was talking about the no vacation policy, he says, well, I set the standard because I don't take too much vacation, but I take vacation. And people see that and they model that. So it's that model behavior. You're a hundred percent right, and 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 I and what I heard you say a little bit on the re virtual remote leadership is you know that planning, that preparation, that that being ready, you know, with the right questions for your team matters more than ever because what used to happen is you you had a whole day with them, right? And yep. sometimes that you'd have that accidental magic, and so as leaders, we were around enough that the accidental magic did happen. Well, you're not going to just be around long enough in this kind of environment where you're going to get accidental magic. You've got to be planned. You've got to be deliberate. You've got to have the questions, not to tell them what to do, but what to hear them do. That's what I'm kind of hearing from you. Did I kind of say that back? Right? Did I did I learn my Absolutely. lesson correctly from you, Brian? Absolutely. Okay. So um, you're you let's say you you're the manager and you have a salesperson as a, a, a the greatest prospect took a meeting from you. Well, you would totally prep before you went yeah. into that meeting. You would know exactly what's going to go down if you're a good sales team and you're, you're part of a good organization who's actually teaches and talks about sales process, right? Here's the problem, Joe. Most sales managers don't treat a coaching session like they treat calling on their greatest prospect, right? I, so I, I, part, guilty as charged. I, I know I didn't do it all the time. Yeah, right. You know? So here's how it goes. Right. So, Joe, let's say you're, you're my rep. Hey, Joe. Uh, hey, let's get on the phone on, you know, on uh, Friday at 10 o'clock. I just want to chat about some things. And then three minutes before I on Friday, I say, oh, shoot, I'm supposed to call Joe. And then I call you. And guess what? I'm a lame manager 
because I didn't respect my coaching time with you. I didn't respect you enough for me to sit down and actually put my calendar. No, no, no. Half hour before, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to think through step number one. You want to know what precise is, Joe, without turning this into a big seminar? Precise is just an acronym for preparation. So before I meet with Joe, what is the objective of my coaching session? In other words, what will I say to establish this objective? What are the details I'm going to look for out of Joe? What might Joe ask for? What can I give Joe? What will, what will I ask for in return? Now, when I get on the phone with Joe, think how, look, I want you to think through this. This is really breaking down a coaching call. All right, I want to build our respect and trust. So what am I going to say to Joe right off the bat to bring the walls down? Am I going to ask about the kid's football game? How's your daughter yeah. cheerleading? Whatever. All right, now Joe's walls are down, so he doesn't feel- I'm like relaxed, that. feeling good. Let him chill, let him chill. Now I will E, which is engage him with questions. I'm going to, I will have right in front of me, I'm going to write down, what are the questions I'm going to ask Joe, right? What am I going to look for out of Joe? Now, once I learn what I think he's going to say, the C of precise is now I'm going to convey my tips, my ideas. Because I'm not saying as a manager, you're supposed to be wimpy and ask only ask questions. At some point, once Joe tells me how he's thinking, he's feeling, it's my job as the manager to or leader to say, Joe, based on what you told me, here's some advice I have, right? And then I know Joe may fire me. So, so here's what I'm getting. If I, boy, I wish I can show you, right? So what we do is when we teach the program is we teach them, we, right? It's just a simple form. How am I prepped? Did I, right? what am I going to say to bring the walls down? What questions am I going to ask? How do I convey a solution? And I will tell you the byproduct of this is folks go in and their coaching sessions are way better. So here's my point. Your number one job is to coach manager. Your number one job is to coach. I don't care. It's not to get the expense reports in, make sure they're doing CRM. It's to make them better at selling. Mm -hmm. It's your number one job. And if you don't treat your coaching sessions like the greatest sales call you're going to make, you're missing an opportunity. Prep for them. Awesome. Awesome. That, that, that absolutely brings home. And that's the one thing I think people really should remember from there. I want to take a few questions mm -hmm. from uh, people. I know we have a few comments. If you have more coming through, let me know. Um, so, uh, someone thinks we're like mini me's. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just, maybe the little short round headed I Irish guys it's here, I guess going on. Yeah. We both uh, have a little, yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> it, it, lo lovable, lovable Larry, which I love, uh, it, that I guess give me a little props. You know, 20 days to the top is the Bible of the, uh, of the industry. So appreciate yeah, it. I'm right. sure he loves that little shout out for you. Wait, was that Larry Lumberman? Uh, that is, that is Larry, my boy. There you go. My so, um, <laughs> it, 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 Hey, and Neil, I think he's shouting out a little bit. Never ask one of your people to do something you wouldn't do. Amen. I mean, that is, I, I can't agree with that more, Neil. I mean, everything project we're doing and I've cut things because when I'm doing it, I'm like, this sucks. You know, this is torture. We can't do this, right? Yeah. And until you do yeah. it, sometimes you don't, you know, that classic, oh, I'll only take a couple minutes. Oh, well, that'll take a couple minutes. Well, yeah. those couple minutes, if they're that painful, you just lost some energy and some steam, right? Totally. So, yeah. And Joe, and on that note, right, here's a here's a common mistake that, that managers make, right? So, again, let's use CRM as an example. I'm the manager with my team. Corporate, corporate came down with this directive. And here's what yeah. the manager does. Here's what the manager says. Hey, guys, listen, um, corporate's telling us to do this. Hey, I know this is going to be a pain. And hey, uh, you're preaching to the choir. I get it. But if they're telling us to do this, we're going to have to do this, guys. You know what? Hey, what? Well, I'm, I'm feeling motivated. I'm feeling real motivated with that speech, man. I'm ready to go. Which, again, here's a big listen. <laughs> here is a landmine for managers. They are so interested in street cred with their people. Yeah. So what they do is they, right? Oh, I know. So if they're, if the, if their team's bitching, well, if I bitch with them, I'm one of them. They'll follow me. What? No, you better resist every, even if you feel that way, corporate's coming down with stuff. Don't you dare sell out the man. You, I'm telling you only because it's, it's not going to help you. Right. If it has to get done, commiserating with negativity because it's cool, no. it ain't going to help you. Right. No. So whether you believe it or not, 
you 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 got to stay with Shut who's paying the checks. I've seen a lot of a lot of leaders step on that landmine. You know, it has happened, and they wonder why things blew up on them, right? And yeah. they did it to themselves. I have a question from uh, Matthew here: that any thoughts on a sales producer who really doesn't get the process or seem to fit in? Numbers are good, but maybe do some other factors uh, rather than themselves. They're just not really getting the number. They're not really getting the process, and it's not fitting in with the team. They're hitting their numbers, but they just. Uh -huh. How do you handle that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So um, typically someone who doesn't get along with anybody, right? So there's sort of this conflict um, mm -hmm. it is, so it's very simple. It's a culture where not enough people have the humility to ask questions and listen and learn from each other. So in this world, what I would do if I had this sort of outlier, he's okay, he's performing all right, but he's sort of jerky. Right. Let's use that technical term. <laughs> I would <laughs> I would set up even virtually. I would set up. Let's use an example. I know a lot of folks are doing the virtual happy hours. OK, yeah. I would set something up and where the jerk he's got to be on. He's going to be on that Zoom and we might play a game. I might say, all right, we're going to do some fact finding. You know, Joe, you've been here for three years. This is the jerk. Joe, tell us something no one knows about you. So we're going to allow Joe to open up. A lot of times, maybe this person is just a control freak. They don't think anyone really understands them. No one gives a damn about me. You know what? We're going to prove that we're going to show you, Joe, that the team actually loves you. We're going to actually ask you questions. We're going to make you a star. So don't, right, don't, don't push Joe off. Let's make Joe a star. Yeah. And a lot of times that's just what it is. They don't feel like they're part of the team, right? And that's where I would start. Now, if Joe goes on and he's still jerky, Mm, yeah, this might not be the spot for them. There's yeah. companies. There's companies that allow that and like that. It's just not ours. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and and I would say don't culture over success. Right? I forget, you know that quote, but, but that culture matters. Don't you know say well he's hitting their numbers. He's hitting 100. percent He's a jerk and causes this, but that's okay because he's hitting his numbers. No, that. That's the quickest way. You might get by one year, maybe two if you're lucky, but that that will be a tree that's ready to fall. And so true. Yep. You so got to yep. be able to clean. You got to get that that rotten tree out of there, otherwise it will corrupt the forest for sure. Oh yeah, so. it, it, I'll give you a great example on this, Joe. I have a great friend of mine, CEO of a large insurance company, and he had the top sales guy who was this jerk we're talking about. Now he sold a lot of stuff, but culturally, this guy was doing some bad things. Yeah. And I would sit with him over a beer and I'd say, Well, you gotta get rid of him. I can't do it, man. His numbers. I mean, he's got the relationship. You know what happened a year later? This guy created an army within the company to oppose the CEO. And mm -hmm. the venture capitalists came in and they ended up canning my buddy. And the, and guess what? The 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 business failed. So they lost the leader because he allowed the loser to stay. It's yeah. poison, Joe. You get rid of the bad apples early, right? Fail yeah. fast, right? But yep. give them a chance again, ask them questions. Maybe they're just, maybe they just don't feel like they, so, yeah. so I'm not saying go, you know, let's not can everyone. Seek to understand them, make them feel they're part of the team, but understand that, boy, you screw up too long. This isn't your spot. I'll find a, a loser company for you. Awesome. Matt, I hope that helped you there. Uh, I gave you some, some insight. Brian, we're at our 30 minutes. I really appreciate you taking the time. Floodgate family, I hope you gained something from this. If there's a way we can help you, whether that's finding some awesome talent or if you're looking yourself and you need some help finding that great next company, that is our mission to improve lives by uniting great people to great companies. So, Brian, thank yeah. you for the time and yeah, we'll talk yeah. soon. Yeah. Take care, guys.